Hello? Today I'm going to talk to you about Huffman coding. What is Huffman coding? Well, there are many ways to store information in computer programming. Computer scientists are always looking for new and better ways to store st strains of data w with using as little space as possible. Uh, Huffman coding is a method of storing st strains of data in a to binary code in, in an efficient manner, or encoding code such, such that they don't take a lot of memory. Huffman coding uses something called lossless data compression, which means that no information is actually lost while you encode it, so it's such that when you decode it, only one possible uh, uh, answer can come from the decoding, and therefore your original message will always be the output. Huffman coding also uses something called variable length coding, which means that the symbols in the data that you have just encoded are converted to a binary symbol based on how often that symbol is used. And the length of the binary symbol may be different for each character depending on how often it's used. For example, if the character A is used in your uh, strain a lot, the binary symbol representing it is shorter. If it is used rarely, the symbol representing it would be longer. This way, all the data would take, on average, less physical space when encoded. Uh, there is a way to decide what binary uh, number to give each character using trees. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Here I have an example for you. Uh, I have five different letters, and I, uh, I also list the frequency of how often they are used. You can see that A and B in my example are sorry, A and D in my example are used the least, while B, C, and E are used more often. When I say frequency, that means, uh, like I said, how often the characters are, appear in the string of data. Now, imagine that these uh, five separate characters uh, right now are separate trees, and we are going to combine them, the trees, uh, slowly bit by bit. We're going to combine two trees at a time, uh, and based on how the small the smallest numbers first. Okay, let's start. The two smallest numbers right now are A and D, so I will combine them in that order. So, like I said, in order, the least is now a branch on the left, the uh, greater is the the branch on the right, and I ha now have a new tree combining the two, which is now of a greater frequency of three. Now I will continue and take the two least uh, uh, valued trees, which in this case are the tree with 3 and the tree with B with value 6. Now we have a new tree. Now again, I will take the two least uh, uh, valued trees. In this case, now it's C and E that are left that have uh, a lesser value than the tree with 9. So I will combine them. And finally, now we only have two tree large trees left, and I'm going to combine them one more time to create one large tree with all the characters in it. Okay, now that we have a large tree containing all the characters, we can assign binary code to each symbol. Uh, to do this, we are going to uh, go down each branch of the tree and uh, assign a zero every time we uh, go down the left branch and uh, a one every time we go down the right branch. So what that means is, it would look like this. So now if you were to follow uh, the tree from the very top to uh, each character, you would get a string of ones and zeros that would uh, create your binary representation. In this case, A would be 0, 0, 0. B would be 0, 1. C would be 1, 0. D would be 0, 0, 1, and E would be 1, 1. These are what uh, A and B and C and D and E would each be, be converted to. Now you might be thinking, well, well wait just a minute. If we're using Huffman coding to uh, make sure that the code takes as little space as possible, you might think, well, wouldn't it make sense to uh, make sure each character take is as small as possible when encoding it into binary uh, such that maybe uh, should we encode them uh, to be of length 1 or 2 instead of 2 and 3 
Uh, well, no, you can't do that. Consider how you would read back the code. How would you decode the code? It's important for you to consider each uh, rep representation to be unique from each other and to be able to recognize that. Uh, they have to be uh, unique in some way, and it should be easy enough for you to tell them apart. If 1 and 0 were uh, representing a character, for example, any other representation that was also contained 1 or 0 could be uh, uh, different re representations for different characters, which would be confusing. If you look back at the previous results, you uh, might notice that uh, w uh, they are different. And you'll see what I mean uh, with the example I'm about to show you. Okay, now here's a question for you. Uh, based on uh, the results we just found, how would you encode A, B, C, B, and E using our Huffman coding? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You would take each individual character and replace it with the binary uh, number that we found for each one. So, A would be replaced with 0, 0, 0. B would be replaced with 0 and 1. C would be replaced with 1 and 0, and so on. And so you get this long string of binary numbers. Now here's another question for you. Suppose you want to decode this long string of binary numbers here. Well, how would you do that? Uh, well, you would have to start either from the back or the front, either way is fine, and uh, sort of uh, deduce uh, using logic uh, which uh, character it must be representing at that point. For example, uh, the, the first character must be C, because C is the only uh, character that rep uh, starts at 1 and then with 0. The no, no other characters have that, so C must go there. After that, E must be next, because E is the only character that starts with 1 and then has a 1 that follows it. So that must be E. Again, uh, D would be next, because only D starts with 0, and then 0, and then 1. No other characters follow that pattern. Now, uh, if you keep uh, following this, uh, you would get then A, then B, then E, and then B again. So you would get C, E, D, A, B, E, and B. Good. Okay then, moving on. Uh, here's a, another uh, topic for you. Suppose you want to find the average length of uh, uh, a, uh, a character based on the Huffman coding that we just found. The average code word length. Well, there is a special formula for that. It's uh, kind of hard to read the way I've written it here. But it's 1 divided by the total frequencies in your list times the sum of uh, all the individual frequencies uh, times the length of uh, each uh, letter uh, for each one. Uh, I'll show you, I'll give you an example uh, in a minute. Here we are. So yeah, here's the example that we've been talking about before. Now here you would calculate the average length uh, to be 1 divided by the total frequencies, which is 1 plus 6 plus 7 plus 2 plus 8, times the uh, length of each individual uh, character times the frequency of that character. So for A it would be 3 times 1 because A is of length 3 and uh, you multiply it by the frequency which is 1. B is the length of 2 times the frequency of 6. C is also the length of 2 times the frequency of 7. D is the frequency of uh, 2 divide, uh, times the length of 3 and E is the length of 2 times the frequency of 8. So if you do that math, you should get that the average character would be 2.125 digits long. Uh, this incorporates uh, math and also uh, probability, I guess, uh, for considering how long the average uh, character would be when you, uh, if you're given a random character based on the frequency of uh, how likely it is to turn up. Okay, I hope you've learned something today. Uh, that's how Huffman coding works. Uh, thank you for watching.